Welcome back to CTV Morning Live. Time for our Healthy Living segment with Steve Brown from the Family Physiotherapy Center. Great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thank you, Leanne. So I love my props. Yes. Can't wait to hit the slopes. Yeah, either can I. Yeah. Should be a lot of fun. So uh, finally, snow. Yeah, so finally we have the snow. People are heading out. And this is something that you tend to see then in the next couple, over the next couple of weeks. People yes. in your office, in your facilities. Yes, so this is a self-defeating segment this morning because it's uh, not good for business to tell them how to prevent their injuries. First and foremost, with any sport, we're looking at doing a dynamic warm-up as opposed to a static warm-up. The dynamic warm-up is something that's done quickly, um, I would say within five to six minutes, not that the static isn't done quickly, but you're not holding it for a long period of time and doing a stretch. We usually use the static warm-up uh, for after the mm -hmm. exercise and what have you. Right, you usually, less static stretch, like holding, uh, you know, holding a v-sit or something like that you got it just doing like this while. and holding it stretching down for like 20 seconds 30 seconds that's your static stretch dynamic that's, stretching is more doing well you're going to show us, i'm going to show you a few okay, exercises awesome. to do on the slopes yeah Perfect. definitely and it actually i was looking up some of the research and the static stretching before an actual event can actually reduce the performance of an athlete and it can last for up to two hours which was interesting to wow really that long yeah yeah. Well, it's interesting to see the research, and of course, we know a lot is done on the dynamic stretching. So let's show people. So this would be five, six minutes prior to actually heading outside, hitting the slopes, going for a cross. Actually, this is you can do on the slopes. Okay. You can actually do while you're there mm -hmm. with your ski boots on. You don't need to have your skis on for the most part. Mm -hmm. All right. So first and foremost is just a nice, easy pectoralis stretch. So we're just holding on to the two ski poles. We're going to stretch on up here. Hold it. One steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat and down to the other side. Nice easy stretch. One steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat. I'll just go through each exercise okay. and just see. Lower trapezius, ski poles up, stretching it on down. This feels good actually after Christmas. It's amazing, eh? Just moving. It you is. You forget how good it feels. Yeah, it feels really good. So that's, we're getting the low back there. Then what I'll do, if we're on the slopes, ski poles down, we're just going to hunch over, let our arms hang down there, and we're going to raise one up to the side, reach it on up, and back down. A little rotational stretch to the thoracic spine and back down. Next, one that I like to do all the time is a little bit of a squat. So again... In, in ski boots. In ski boots. I'm trying to think, the likelihood is that it's pressing you a little bit forward, but then again, you're going to be in a squat position. You're going to be squatting going, going all downhill. the time when you're going downhill. This is something that you want to get forward. Next, in terms of with your hips, Ski poles planted. You have to realize that there would, will be snow here. All right, and a nice easy for the hip. And this is a nice one. It's just relaxed, kicking forward and backwards. We can even do like a little twist with our hips internally and externally out. And then we can go side to side a little bit. Same thing in terms of turning in and turning out. Back and forth. Excellent. Ski poles down a little bit. This one might be a little bit tricky but we do a little bit of a lunge. Should I mention, tell people right now that you've really injured your toe and that this is killing, <laughs> killing him right now. So yeah. this would be the deepest lunges, right? So you're going like this. Definitely. Okay. There, I had a little, uh, had a little injury over Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's gotta be hurting you. So there you go. All right, so those were six stretches. Yes, so one of the things that also what you wanna do before you go on the ski slopes, after you do that nice little dynamic stretch, first couple runs, take it easy. Find out what the train is like, start to warm up on the actual slope yourself. And before you even go to the ski slope, you want to take your ski boots and your ski into a reputable shop to make sure that the ski binding is set up properly. This is one of the key components of people getting injured, is that never borrow someone's ski equipment and just go out there. Weight's Definitely. gonna be different. Uh, Weight's gonna be different. The aspect is different. You've got the whole aspect there. There's a little self-test that you can do. I can't do it with you this morning. But what you wanna do with your skis is that you wanna turn them on the edge, all right? And you wanna see if you can gradually slide out your toe of the ski boot, okay, out of your binding. That's a little self-test to make sure that your ski binding will actually release for you if you do have a fall. It's kind of a catch-22. You want your ski binding to hold your boot in place, but you also want it to drop when you do have a wipeout. So that was one aspect was the toe. The next one is to stretch the ski back and just raise the heel of the boot up, gradually putting the extra force on it to allow the, the heel of the boot to come out of the ski binding. Great information. Sorry I got to cut you off. We've run out of time, but uh, always check in for more information uh, on their website and check out how many, the 10 10 locations Ten that we're locations. Looking, at, yes. looking at right now for the Family Physiotherapy Center. Uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. We're back right after this.